Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Quick Quits with Steven Seagal. I'm your host, Ronan Tim HD, and this time, Steven Seagal is... Look, I need to tell you something. What's that, boy? How much you admire me? How much you want to be like me? Uh, yeah, yeah, that too. Where's your friend Costell? Where's your warrant? There's my warrant right here. Now you're coming with me. The IDTF agent specifically asked about you. And it wasn't just about selling dough. You American <laughs> You Americans are known for your brutality. I'm proud of you too. I got a 45 here and five other guns trained on your brain, man. You are a dead man. Born to raise hell. Probably the worst film we have seen thus far. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I'm, like... It was released in 2010, and of course it's gonna be terrible because Steven wrote it. And, yeah, him writing his own movies is not gonna end well. And honestly, I didn't even know who the main character in this movie was. Like, you would expect it to be Steven, but he's, like, half in it. And he's half not. Because near the end of the movie, like, there are these, there's this drug lord, like, bad guy Romanian mafia boss. And for some reason, the movie tries to get you to sympathize with him, even though he's a drug lord. I don't know. And he has, like, a wife that's, like, 30 years younger than him. <laughs> so, yeah. And <laughs> it's just, like... And I, there was a part where we were watching the movie, and we checked the time. It felt like it had been an hour. It was only 36 minutes in. And it was so fucking boring. Like, you could... I, I cannot describe the story to you, because I've already forgot it. Like, it's that bad. The movie is so bad, I don't even remember what the plot is about. It's like something about the International Drug Task Force, which Steven is a part of, and he's trying to take out, like, a guy who sells drugs in Romania. Sounds really fucking exhilarating, doesn't it? <laughs> but, like, Steven is just so uninteresting. Like, he is in every single one of his movies. Uh, and the worst part about this movie is there's not even a good actor to lean on, because nobody wants to be in Steven's movies now. But back in the day, there used to be at least one good actor that you could lean on. It's like, okay, we have a bearable actor. No, all the actors are ter terrible in this movie. All of them. Like, there's not one good actor in this movie. I feel, I just... The way I feel about this movie, it's just like... I feel like I'm dying inside when I watch it. You know, I feel like my soul is being sucked out of my, like, my brain. Like, I feel like my soul is getting sucked out of my nose while I'm watching this movie. Because it's just, it's so boring. Like, I lost interest as soon as the movie started. <laughs> like, it was so uninteresting and you had no reason to care. Because it was so terribly written because Steven wrote it. So, of course, it's going to be terrible. And, like, you have no reason to care about anything that's going on. Because you don't care about the characters because they're not well written. And it's like Steven has... Like, a girlfriend that sh she's only in the movie, like, three times. Then they never show her again, which, why was she in the movie at all? So Steven could get action. That's why. <laughs> that's why she was in the movie. And that's it. There's That's pretty much the only reason why she's in the movie, because she serves no purpose at all. Um, and the villain? At first, I thought the evil Romanian mafia boss guy... I don't, I don't remember his name. He was, like, an old guy. He had the 30 years younger than him wife. Like, I thought he was the villain, but no, he's a good guy, apparently. Apparently, he's a good guy. So the evil guy is, like, a lesser drug lord, and he, he killed two people at the beginning of the movie. So he's like, you should, you should hate him. He's, like, big bad guy, so you should... This movie was, it was hard to get through. And I feel like 
from this point forward, it's gonna be really hard to get through Steven Moon's movies. Because we got all we got through all the old good ones, like good ones. Now we have this this bullshit to deal with. We have to deal with terrible writing, no good actors, Steven's stupid fat face. We have to deal with all of it. And I don't know if I'm ready to be honest. I don't know if I'm ready to deal with this shit. Because like and also Steven did a like he didn't do his Aikido bullshit in his other movies, but he was doing his Aikido bullshit in this one. And it was just, it looked so fake. Because it is. Okay, so the action in this movie was fucking atrocious. There was, it wasn't even really an action movie. Like, I don't even know how I could categorize this movie, because the action was just like, the way Steven sees action, it's not like super cool, like, fight scenes and shit. He doesn't see that. He sees gunfights and gunfights are action oriented but you can't just have gunfights in an action movie and say oh that's action you need to add drama to the fight scenes to have a reason to care about the fucking fight scenes you need to have stakes and here i'm going to give a good example the gray man and a lot of those action scenes there were stakes and the action scenes in these movies there's no stakes like in the in the like a uh, park in the park uh shootout like, he was cuffed to a bench. The gray man was cuffed to a bench, and he had to, like, get in cover, and he had to p pick his lock. And he was in danger because he didn't have a weapon. Steven was not in any danger in this movie. You had no reason to fear for his life because he wrote the own movie, so he's never in danger. You know what I mean? He never has a disadvantage. He's just walking around in a, le a leather trench coat with a pistol. With... That's it. There's nothing to care... The act... I think if you want to have a good action movie, as I said earlier, you have to have a reason to care about the fight scenes. You can't just have a fight scene in the movie and say that's good action. It's not. To have a good action movie, you need the action to matter. You need to have a reason to be invested in the movie and not just be like, oh, look, an explosion. That's kind of like how Michael Bay movies work. You know, it's just like, just eye candy. You know what I mean? You have no reason to care other than the explosion. And there was only one explosion in this movie and it looked like shit. <laughs> Like, he threw a grenade, and it was like, he didn't even need to be there. Like, the explosion didn't even need to happen. Like, he threw a grenade at two people, hiding behind, like, wooden walls. So, really, they could have just shot them. But they threw a grenade, and, like, it was like video game logic. Like, it didn't... You know how a grenade would probably blow wooden boards through a floor? They would probably blow up the wooden boards? No, that's fine. It's fine. They just didn't want to... It's literally how video game grenades work. And they he could take cover behind a couch with bullets. He could... He could... He could take cover from bullets behind a couch. Don't try that. If you're getting shot at, do not hide behind a couch. Because they could probably just shoot right through it. And then there's another scene where there's this guy hiding behind a wooden door shooting at them. And they don't shoot him until he, for some reason, even though he didn't kill any of them, he opens the door to let him get self-riddled with bullets. They could have just shot him through the door. They could have just shot him through the door. Because it's a wooden door. I think bullets would probably penetrate through a wooden door pretty easily. It's a pretty thin wooden door. Especially if you have a fucking shotgun, I think that's going to blast right through a wooden door. <laughs> but I've never used a gun, so maybe, maybe wooden doors are the most, like, amazing way so you can block bullets is with a wooden door. It's just so stupid. It's so stupid. So badly written. So uninteresting. So boring. I had to push myself through it. And honestly, I was relieved when I saw those credits roll. And I feel like they're just going to get worse as we go. So have that to look forward to. I do not recommend this film for anybody. Uh, and I'm serious. Like, I don't recommend this film for anybody. And I don't even recommend this film for Steven Seagal fans. Because if you're a Steven Seagal fan, watch his older shit. His older shit is better. Like, even his early 2000s, like, 90s and 80s shit, all that shit is good. Like, good. For action movie standards. But, do, don't watch this movie. It's just, it's, it's so uninteresting. Like, it's bad. Just don't watch it. I don't recommend it for anybody. Just don't watch it. 
it's you can't even laugh at it because I started to laugh at her after a while, but then it just then it just you just can't you don't even care enough to laugh at it anymore. You're just frustrated with it at that point. You can't even laugh at it anymore as the movie goes on. It's because it, it's not funny. It's sad. Because people put their time and money into making this movie. Ten million dollars. Ten million buckaroonies to make this movie. And it does not show. The movie looks like it's like a ten thousand dollar budget. Like, the movie does not look like it had a $10 million budget. Okay. I don't know. But I think uh, I'm going to do the three, the triple rating. Um, as a normal movie, hey, you know what? Fuck this movie. Real rating, one out of ten. Don't need to explain it. The entire review explained that. Uh, Steven, as like an ironic enjoyment, like three out of ten. It's not even... It's not even that funny to laugh at ironically because you just get frustrated with it after a while. And three, Steven Seagal rating, two. Or maybe even a 1 as a Steven Seagal rating. Because this is probably just as bad, if even worse, as Against the Dark. Worse than... Probably worse than Against the Dark. Because at least you can laugh at Against the Dark throughout it. And something is happening, I think. I don't remember a lot about Against the Dark, but I remember something. And it wasn't even really a Steven Seagal movie. He was only in, like, 10% of it. But then... Yeah. Real rating, 1 out of 10. Ironic rating, 3 out of 10. Steven Seagal, 1 out of 10. Fuck this movie. And, um... If you like me getting frustrated with Steven Seagal movies, keep tuning into the show, because this is how I'm going to act throughout the next... how many episodes I have left. So, hope you enjoyed me getting frustrated, because that's why I'm gonna act. That's how I'm gonna act, so... Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you liked it. Hope you share with your friends. Hope you subscribe, turn the notifications on, comment down below on how much you liked it. And uh, this has been Quick Quips with Steven Seagal. Signing off. Fucking Steven Seagal.